We're starting a new series today called Victorious Living on the Good News Program. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we're making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Victorious Living. Victory belongs to every believer in Christ, but it's not automatic. Learn how to deal with worry and anxiety when faced with trials. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program where we are going to begin a brand new series that I'm calling Victorious Living. And it will deal with overcoming life's greatest challenges. I believe this will be a blessing to you. You're going to want to follow along with this teaching because it will definitely build. There's a few points that we'll make along the way. We'll make it clear enough that you can get something to hold on to and put into practice in your everyday life. And we're just going to feed you and build you up and edify you with the Word of God. I just believe that the time that you spend watching and listening to these programs will be well worth the effort. Uh, so in this series, we do have, as always, we have study notes. And these are called Victorious Living Study Notes. You can find these on my uh, homepage of my website, gregfritz.org. Go there and, and download those notes, and you can follow along with the teaching. We also have, if you've been waiting for another audio-video uh, series. This is it, Victorious Living. You can go to our free download section. You can get the entire teaching on this uh, subject. You can watch it or listen to it, either one. It'll be audio, video, and if you don't know how to do that, you can actually go to our website and be streaming these uh, sessions, these programs, within seconds. And if that's difficult for you, call our phone number and we'll help walk you through it. Uh, there's no reason if you if you want uh, uh, these teachings on your phone or your iPad or your computer, there's no reason you couldn't have these. We've uh, gone to the uh, the trouble to put them up there, make them free, and uh, we invite you to go get them and uh, and watch them over and over. You could use them if you took these videos and the the study notes. You could have a Bible study. It's a ready-made Bible study. If uh, you get together with friends or family, you could use it for your own personal family devotional. Uh, it'll give you the teaching and then also the outline, and I think it could be a tremendous tool. I haven't mentioned this in a while, but we have a newsletter that we send out. Most of the things we do, especially on this program, are done through the internet, you know, on, online. But we have an actual physical newsletter that we send out, not every month, but we put articles in here and maybe some reports and itinerary sometimes, products that we have, just what's going on in our ministry. But a lot of times, most of the time, we have a really good article. And this one, let's see what this article is. It's time to move on. <laughs> it's about living with no regrets. And uh, so we, anyway, these newsletters will be a blessing to you. Uh, you can go to our website or call our phone number. Tell If you're totally, you know, computer illiterate, go to our phone number and call and say, put me on your mailing list. I want to receive your newsletter. And we'll do that as well. Our phone number is 918-749-7744. I want to get into this teaching today, and I'm, I've titled it Victorious Living, and it, got, it does go along with the teaching that we have been doing um, on carefree living. This is just kind of a step beyond that. In carefree living, we dealt with, with fears and worry and concerns that face all of us that operate way too frequently in our mind, taking up space in our minds. But I wanted to move on and talk about overcoming trials and challenges. I mean, not, you know, some people can sit around and worry about absolutely nothing. They don't really have a challenge or a trial. They just live in a state of worry and, and concern and, and anxiety. And that's not scriptural. And you need to get our series, Carefree Living. It'll help you uh, in that area. But all of us from time to time face trials, challenges. We have to go through things in life that are uncomfortable, intimidating, threatening. And, and when we face these things as Christians, we need to be ready. We need to have scripture, scriptural 
um, weaponry. We need to have scriptural, a scriptural foundation to draw from, to stand on. We need to know how to react to the trials of life. Now, just because trials come to everybody, <clears throat> if you've watched this program long enough, you, you've heard me say it, and I'll say it again. These things don't come from God. God's not our problem, and God's not sending trials our way. He doesn't have to. We live in a fallen world that's filled with enemies of God and filled with contrary circumstances, and there's an enemy in this world that would love to rob you and keep you and hold you back and keep you from experiencing the fullness of your inheritance in Christ. So there are things in life that we have to face and overcome, or at the very least, we have to go through them. If we can make a few adjustments in our own thinking, rather than surviving trials, rather than just getting through it and getting out the other side, beaten and scarred and bruised and, 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 and anxious and worried and fearful and, and, you know, having another sad story about, you know, what else happened to me? Have you ever seen those people that, that just life seems to just con constantly beat them up and beat them down and they're always talking about their last defeat, their last trial, their last problem or whatever they're going through there is a way if we switch our mentality that we can go through trials and challenges and come out on the other side better than when we went in as victors with you know using the principles that are in God's word we can be we can live a victorious life and that is God's will for us so the first thing we're going to do in these teachings is I want to help establish in you this, this, this spirit of a conqueror, this victory mentality. If you feel like a failure and you talk like a failure and you look like a failure, then it's going to be difficult for you to go through trials with any sense of confidence, with any faith at all. But if we can take the word of God and reprogram our minds, see ourselves in the mirror of God's word. And let me just tell you, the world is probably not going to tell you you're more than a conqueror. The world is not going to tell you you have the victory. You're the head and not the tail. The world's not going to encourage you like the word of God will. And so if your self-image has come from what people have said about you, what your parents said about you, what your school said about you, what your experiences have been, then you're not going to have necessarily a victory mentality. We need to see ourselves in the light of God's word. If you're a Christian, victory belongs to you. In fact, you've already got the victory. You've already won in Christ and we're, we're literally a victory going somewhere to happen. And there'll be plenty of times and, 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 and opportunities in life to prove that, to, to walk that out, and to see that come to pass in your life because life presents challenges. But we are up to the task. You are ready to live life victoriously in these modern times. As I said in my last teaching series, God's promises don't have an expiration date. Whatever God said about the early church is still true about you. Since the Bible, most of it, and a lot of the scriptures we're going to read were written 2,000 years ago, it's important to know that these promises weren't just true for them then. They're also true for us now. We can stand on them. We can believe them. We can speak them. We can meditate on them, and they will do for us what they did for the early church. I, I, I feel like I need to make this point over and over again, but we are not an inferior generation. We're not an inferior church. You know, the, the generation before most of us has been labeled the greatest generation and because they went through World War II. And I don't want to take anything away from what those heroes did for our world and our nations. But, but I want to say this. Don't feel like we're some kind of inferior generation or this, the church is, is not what it used to be. 
because according to the word of God, you have the same new birth, you have the same Holy Spirit living in you, you have the same covenant with God, you have the same promises they had, we can do what they did because we have the same covenant rights with God as they had. So we are not an inferior generation. The church has not lost its edge. We can have and do anything anybody else could have done in any generation. So let me give you some scriptures to establish this victory mentality in your life. First of all, let's look at the greatest victor in the history of the world, and that was Jesus. Jesus became a human. He became one of us so that he could destroy, defeat our mortal enemies. And those mortal enemies were death and the devil and sin and sickness, disease, poverty. Jesus came to do what we couldn't do. And if you want to see victory, you see it in the resurrection of Christ. In fact, everything that we have today, victory-wise, is because of his victory. But thank God Jesus came and did what he did. You know, even the Old Testament saints operated in a level of victory, but think of how much more we should after the resurrection of Jesus. Not only do we have all the promises of the old covenant backing us up, but we have these new covenant promises that became ours since Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He appeared to John in Revelation 1, and in verse 17, he said to John, because when John saw him, he fell on his face like a dead man, and, and uh, Jesus laid his right hand on John and said, do not be afraid. You know, that is a quite a statement. Let me just reiterate that. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. He is all powerful. He's the Alpha and the Omega, but by the way, don't be afraid of Jesus. He's the last person in the whole world that you should be afraid of. He did all that he did for us. He's pulling for us. He's in our corner. He's, he's more for us than many times we are for ourselves. So to say don't be afraid is really an understatement. Don't be afraid of the resurrected Christ. He is your greatest advocate. He said, do not be afraid for I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of, of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things uh, which are, and the things which will take place after this. I just love this fact that that, that Jesus said, you know, I was, I was dead, but I'm alive. In other words, I conquered death and I have the keys. These keys represent authority. They represent victory. They represent uh, the fact that he got back everything that Adam lost, that humanity is back in the presence of God. We've been raised. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians uh, 2, 6, that we were raised and seated with him in heavenly places. So we operate from a position of victory. As members of the body of Christ, victory is yours. Victory belongs to you. Victory is part of who you are. You were born again in victory because of victory. Colossians 1, 13, well, let's go to Hebrews 2, 14. Let's kind of stay with this theme for just a minute. Uh, in, in Hebrews 2, verse 14, it says, inasmuch as children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself has uh, shared in the same. In other words, we became physical human beings and so did he. Uh, that through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If Jesus defeated death and defeated the devil, that is, a, that is ultimate victory. I mean, that is victory on a scale that you and I cannot even comprehend. Jesus became a human and he defeated death in our name, in our stead. He defeated the devil and he defeated sin. He defeated all of our enemies and he has the victory. He has the keys. He's raised and seated at the right hand of God. Colossians 
All I'm trying to do today is just establish this this uh, victory mentality in your life. You have maybe you haven't read these scriptures in a while. I encourage you spend time in the epistles. You're going to find these victory scriptures overcoming type scriptures, abundant scriptures in the epistles, and they apply to you as a born again child of God. Colossians 2.15 says, having disarmed principalities and, and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. In, in what? He triumphed over our enemy in death, burial, and resurrection. He died, he was buried, God raised him from the dead, and when that happened, he spoiled or disarmed, destroyed principalities and powers. He put them to naught. He broke their power over mankind or over his people. Death has no more hold on him. And that's what he was telling John. He said, look, I was dead, you saw me. I died, but now I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. You know what that means? I have conquered death. I've solved the death problem. I am victorious. I have the ultimate victory. And we now are in him. We didn't conquer Satan. Jesus did. And yet he gives us the victory. So it's like he, he got on our team. He went out and defeated our opponent. And then we get the victory. That's a pretty good deal. Now, why would God do that? I'll tell you exactly why God would do that, because we couldn't do it for ourselves. If we could have defeated the devil on our own, if we could have overcome the curse of sin, if we could have paid the price for our own forgiveness, God would have let us do it. But we couldn't. We had nothing to, to draw from. We were all kind of in the same boat. And there was no one here that had anything, any, any way to pay or purchase redemption or overcome Satan. So Jesus came and did it for us. But once he was raised from the dead, everything for us changed. His victory was our victory. His triumph was our triumph. His resurrection was our resurrection. His ascension was our ascension. We were raised with him, made alive with him. We were raised with him and seated with him in heavenly places. And now we reign with him. We are part of his body. He gave us his name. This, this union with him goes throughout the New Testament. You see it all through the epistles so that you can understand that his victory was my victory. My, and, and I walk in victory today because of what he did. But it doesn't make it any less a victory. I mean, you know, if you're on the team and you play one position and somebody else plays another and your team wins, you both win. You're both champions. You both get a ring. You both get to go to the award ceremony. The, the one person doesn't get less of a victory than, than the other. They all get victory. They, they, they do it together. So Jesus represented us and he won for us, and he's given us the victory. I say this because I want you to think like a victor. Don't take, don't allow experiences to shape your thinking or your view of yourself. Don't allow past failures or what people said about you shape your view of yourself. You are a victor, not because of what you've done, but because of what he's done. And it's very real. This, these truths are spiritual, but they're very real and they belong to you today. What's important is that we act on them. They can lay dormant and we can live a life that's contrary to these truths. But if we will begin to believe the Bible, talk the Bible, watch the rest of these programs. I'm going to build you up and help renew your mind to the fact that you are victorious. Once you begin to think like that, you will act differently. Quit going around hanging your head down, looking like a failure, feeling like a failure, and, and get into the Word of God. See yourself in the mirror of God's Word. You don't look nearly as bad as you think you do. <laughs> You're looking in the wrong mirror. <laughs> Have you ever gotten up and gone, wow, that, uh, oh, 
Well, don't look at yourself in a natural mirror. Go to the mirror of God's word where you're victorious. You're a new creation. You're the righteousness of God. You're his workmanship. You were made in his image. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. If God is for you, who can be against you? <laughs> the, it, the scriptures go on and on talking about you. That Listen, this, you've got to read it as if it's talking about you. It's not talking about them. This is about you. You've got to accept what Jesus did for you personally. All right, Colossians 1.13, and now it's going to get more personal. Colossians, <clears throat> you know, I was just going to do... Uh, a week of this, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do 10, 10 sessions because uh, it, it's just there's just so much to get in, and I want to let it sink in. If you'll just follow me, uh, if you'll follow me along for two weeks for or for 10 days, 10 sessions, uh, I believe these teachings will really help you begin to see things from a different perspective. And a lot of times, I mean, that's always the beginning of a change as you begin to think different and see things differently. Colossians 1.13 says about you, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. You've been delivered. You're not bound. You're not oppressed. You're not overcome. You've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So maybe you were defeated. Maybe you were a slave and you were. You were a slave to sin and a slave to death and a slave to Satan. But you've been delivered from that entire kingdom. You've been translated into the kingdom of God. Now you have a new father. God is your father. Jesus is your Lord. You have new covenant rights and privileges. You have a new citizenship in a new country. It's like you left that old life of bondage behind and you've been transferred and translated into a new kingdom. So you're a citizen of another place and you have a new constitution. You have new rights and privileges. You need to get into your, into your constitution, into the will and look at it and see what's yours now because it's true that we've been translated. It's true that, that Jesus is our Lord and we live in the kingdom of God today, but it won't affect your, your experience until you begin to process these things, until you begin to see who you are and what you have in Christ. Victory belongs to you. Victory is part of your inheritance and it ought to be worked out in your life even when you're dealing with problems that are bigger than you. We're going to tell you how to walk in victory, how to implement victory in your everyday life. It works. This is not just the theology. We're not just going to apply it to old saints. We're going to apply it to us today. It works right here, right now, these same principles. All right, so he delivered you from the power of darkness, translated you into the kingdom of his dear son, now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians 2, and we're going to visit this one a few times. It says in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. I just love the way Paul speaks. He uses words like all and every and always. And in, here, in this case, it's always. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and diffuses through us the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You are supposed to always walk in victory. Now that may go against your religious upbringing. I understand. You know, some people think to be to be humble, they have to be broke and, and, and humiliated and, and, you know, act a certain way, but it's just not scriptural. The scripture says, thanks be to God who always leads you in triumph in Christ. Was Jesus a triumphant person? Yes. Was Jesus defeated and bound and depressed and oppressed? No, he was triumphant. And now that we're in him, he wants to always lead us in victory. 
You say, well, you're never going to have a problem? Never. No, I didn't say that. I said we can get through them. We can face all the challenges of life with the victory that's ours in Christ. You don't have to wait and just see what this next problem, next trial is going to do to you. You can get on the offensive. You can stand on the Word of God. You can go in by faith. You can go through it by faith, and you can come out on the other side by faith. And when you do this, you become better. You become more mature. You become uh, more like Jesus on the outside every time. Rather than your trials beating you down, scarring you for life, bruising you, changing you into a, a, an, another person in a negative way, your trials can literally help you go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And it's just a change of attitude. The, the promises are already yours. Everything's already in place. You just have to activate them. You have to act on the word. You have to respond in a different way uh, to go through these challenges victoriously. Well, that was an introduction. Uh, there's a lot more to come here. I've got more scriptures that I want to give you just to help you establish this victorious mentality. And if you'd like all of the scriptures, I already said this, but listen, go to get my study notes. All the scriptures will be in there. You can begin to study those and look at those and begin to renew your mind to the fact that you are a victory going somewhere to happen. Well, we've run out of time for today's program. We'll continue this teaching in the next one. And until then, may God's best be yours. Victory belongs to every believer in Christ, but it's not automatic. Learn how to deal with worry and anxiety when faced with trials and get proactive so you can enjoy supernatural victory over life's greatest challenges. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. I'd like to remind you that I just finished a teaching that we've entitled Carefree Living. And you can get this, uh, the audio teaching in this series absolutely free. If you'll go to my website to the download section, now the CD series, you'll have to pay and we'll mail that to you. But if you'd like a free download of this series, four messages, go to my website, look for Carefree Living, and enter the code CARE72, C-A-R-E-7-2, and get your download today. I love Greg. <laughs> I love his sense of humor. I love how he bring out the word. I just, just love Greg. Awesome man. Awesome man of God. Immediately he became a favorite teacher of mine because he delivers the word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. He's just straight to the point and down to it. And just to let go, be happy. I've been in ministry years. I've never heard anybody teach like this. And I had breakthrough today that's going to impact other people. I am so grateful for Greg Fritz. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Partner with us to tell the world about the good news of Jesus Christ. The faithful financial support of our partners enables us to produce the Good News program. We invite you to donate and partner with us today. Learn more at gregfritz.org. And the lion lost. And David learned a valuable lesson. When you begin to stand on scripture and stand up in your rights and privileges in God, he'll back you up. Say, well, I wish God would solve my problems. That's not what it says. He's not going to solve your problem. God didn't come down and kill the lion. God anointed David to do it. You have to take that place. You've got to stand in that place of faith. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.